Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome. Hopefully you guys are finding me okay. Happy Get Kraken on Christmas, a week late. <laughs> Not really late because I uh, told all of you ahead of time that we were going to do this. Hello, we've got Arizona in Texas. Hello, Brianne. Hi, Sue. Hi, Ruth. Colorado, ready to get cracking. I love it. Awesome. Well, I welcome all of you. Yeah, Emmeline says, I've been kind of busy. Just a wee bit. Um, and in full disclosure, we will see how tonight goes. I think I have all my supplies. Um but there's still supplies that need to be unpacked for my big event that I just had this weekend, uh, Crop on the Cape, first in-person event in over two years. And man, oh man, I am still dragging. <laughs> it's crazy how to go from teaching online to teaching in person to running around and seeing everybody in person. It was incredible, but I am still wiped out still wiped out. Hello, Jen and Lindsay. Jen and Lindsay were two of my friends that helped out so much during Crop on the Cape. I don't know what I would have done without my friends, you guys. And Chris, it's crazy. It's crazy. Hello, Mary Lou. Hello, everybody. Hi, Holly. Hi, Michelle from Alaska. Hello, Nicole. So we are live on both YouTube and Facebook for Get Kraken on Christmas. Uh, if you're catching the replay, feel free to tag me in any questions or comments that you want me to see. On YouTube, I have all of the supplies that we're using tonight linked in the description box. And on Facebook, I have the blog post linked, which has all of the supplies listed as well. Holly, you do not need to find a friend to come to Crop on the Cape next year. I had over 20 people come solo this year. Um, there's over 250 people that attend. I had at least over 20 people that came solo to the point where I thought maybe something went wrong with registration. And I emailed each of them separately just to make sure I wasn't missing a seating request. And a ton of them if not all, left with brand new friends. So no, you do not need a friend to come with you. It is so much fun. Hello, Miss Josie, my biatch who also helped at Crop on the Cape. Yeah, totally come solo. Everybody becomes a friend. Oh my gosh, if it's your birthday weekend, you need to be there. Uh, registration will open in early November. I recommend that you go to cropontheCape.com and sign up for um, the email newsletter. Hello, Mary. All right. So this is Get Cracking on Christmas. I can answer any questions about that event while we're creating tonight. As always, I will try to answer all of your questions. If for some reason I miss a question, make sure you just ask me again. I, of course, have delayed comments. So, um, you know, just beware of that. Tonight's card's a little different. We are going to not stamp anything. Uh, a sentiment, but not really stamp anything. And we're not going to color anything with Copics. So I don't know. I don't know what's going on in this world, but we are definitely going to get cracking on Christmas. I do these once a month to encourage you guys to all start your holiday cards early. So we are not stressed in October and November when we get so busy with all the holidays approaching as it is. And this way we get to play with new techniques. We get to use our supplies. I don't know about you guys, but I buy all the holiday stuff from all the companies because it's all so cute and fun. Um, 
And so not only are these monthly lives for you guys to hopefully learn something and hang out with me and chit chat, I also hope that you guys will start to work on your holiday cards as well. So you guys could be die cutting some sentiments or coloring some images or maybe cutting some paper, whatever it is, as long as you're get cracking, it's not going to be as stressful in the fall. Just saying. All right, we are going to flip the screens and, and add, add in, in um, my desktop. Hopefully you guys can still hear me okay. Let's see. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So this is the adorable card that we are going to make tonight. Um, it is a non-traditional size and I'm aware of that. I actually originally made this card as one of my makes for Tim Holtz when he had his Sizzix holiday release. Um, and sometimes as you're creating a scene, you just need to let the story that you're telling dictate the card size, right? So um, I would not probably make a hundred of these to ship because shipping will probably be a little bit um, additional, but you know, one or two for those couple special people in your life, it is totally, totally okay. Um, and don't let card sizes, typical card sizes dictate how your scene is going to come together. Um, so we are going to get started, and I'm actually not even going to pull out any of the dies just yet. We're going to get started by doing our inky background here with Salvage Patina. I think I've used Salvage Patina on probably 98% of my cards that I have made since Salvage Patina came out last May. I'm obsessed. So I've got regular distress ink um, and you could do this with oxides. Um, I'm using regular because I want that translucent property um, and I really like the bright vividness of the regular distress inks for this type of look. I am also going to be using just a piece of acetate. I keep you know, packaging from stamps, real acetate, whatever it is you guys want to use. Um, oh, it's so good to see you, Beth. Blast from the past. She says, I, did, I didn't I did know you did this. I've gotten sidetracked and have not crafted in maybe five years. You may have inspired me to follow this. Oh, that makes me so happy, Beth. I'm sure all of your supplies are just waiting to be dusted off. And uh, you will just, it'll be like riding a bike. You'll be right back at it again. Although there are a lot of new things from five years ago, but um, the supplies that you have are still pertinent and still, um, you know, going to be fun to play with. So happy to see you, Beth. So we have a piece of acetate here. I'm going to be using my beloved Distress Sprayer. Um, most of this card, um, well, not most, but all the inky stuff is going to be done on my beloved Distress White Heavy Stock. You guys all know I'm obsessed with this paper. It's a 130 pound uh, cardstock. It does take to wet techniques, which is amazing. Um, and then I, um, it also... What else was it? Oh, and it's just a true, true white. So um, I still love Distress Watercolor cardstock, but what's great about the heavy stock is the inks don't really absorb into the paper as much. So you're really getting bright, vibrant colors. Tracy said over on YouTube, just a reminder to all of us who love and appreciate all Jen does and want to support her, please remember to like the video. Thank you, Tracy. I am really bad at remembering to ask you guys to do that. Um, YouTube is still a very new beast for me. So definitely, if you're watching on YouTube, definitely like and subscribe. You can also sign up for notifications so you get alerted when I go live. And on Facebook, feel free to share this um, in any Facebook groups you're part of where it's allowed 
or on your page, um, tag a crafty friend that might wanna see this as well. So thank you guys, I really appreciate that. So we've got Distress White Heavy Stock and I have already cut a piece for my background. This is five and a half by five and a half. Again, you could totally modify this card to fit on an A2, um, but I just really liked kind of making a larger card. There's a few makers um, for Tim who always make larger cards and they inspired me. I was like, I'm breaking free from the A2 card size. I'm, I'm doing it. I'm getting wild and crazy here. All right. So I have, like I said, my Distress White Heavy Sock and my Acetate. I'm going to take my Distress Ink Pad and I'm just going to press and twist. This is going to lay some of that ink down onto the acetate. If I put it over this paper, you guys can see um, how there's some ink on there. And now what we're going to do is take the Distress Sprayer. And you can use any water mister for this part, but later on I'm going to explain why I love the Distress Sprayer. But I'm going to make droplets. And you really want to get some good size droplets. Okay. Hello, Avril from Ireland. Hello, Sarah from California. And so I'm going to just flip this over. And the beauty of doing acetate is you can kind of roll it and move it around the background however you want. And this is what I call ink smooshing. Um, and I will tell you, ink smooshing looks different every day that you do it. It all depends on your mood, your, you know, steps of how you do it. There's really no wrong or right way to doing it. Um, so it can always come out looking different. We're only going to use one color um, today, but you could use multiple colors. I do go over this technique in my Distress Ink Technique online class that's still available. Um, you can sign up for that on my website, shirkus.com. And step or part two to that class is coming out very soon at the end of April. More details about that. I'm using the Ranger Heat Tool. Um, the Ranger Heat Tool is a low um, heat and it's a diffused heat. So it's not really blowing things all over the place like when I get to doing um, embossing later and you're not gonna scorch your cardstock. So I can essentially, I always move it like this. I don't know if you guys do that as well, but I'm always like moving it and you definitely don't need to move it and you will not burn your cardstock. I can literally just sit it here to kind of dry this little puddle I have and I will not scorch my paper. If you guys are trying to do distress techniques, wet techniques with your embossing gun, you are probably going to struggle. Um, it's really hard to, um, to use an embossing gun and get really great results. And I actually learned that when my Ranger heat tool had kind of died on me after over a decade of use. Um, and it took me a while to get a new one. I was trying to do some of my most favorite distress techniques with an embossing gun, and I was struggling so, so hard. Uh, Jen asked, is that a genabler word? Are you thinking ink smooshing? Um, it is not a genabler word. If There's many people that use that term. Hello, Sherry in Canada. Yeah, it's a, it's so the key tool is much quieter than in the embossing gun, but I will tell you, it's probably a little bit louder than how you guys are hearing it. Uh, YouTube and Facebook kind of take out that background noise automatically, but it is much quieter than an embossing gun. Yay. Miss Huppy says the Distress Ink background class was excellent. I love to hear that. Yeah, ink smushing is a term in the paper crafting world. If you actually search it on Instagram, you'll see that there's a lot of people who have hashtagged their projects with ink smooshing. Chris was asking me that the other day. He thought it was like a made up gen word as well, like a genism. And I was like, nope, I'm not the only one that says that word, even though it sounds funny. So I'm going to keep building up layers. So I put some more ink on my acetate. 
I spritzed it with some water to get some droplets. And I'm going to just start to build up some layers. We're making like our little snowy background. And I'll talk about how even once you get the ink down on the paper, if we want to break up any of these spots or droplets up here, we can use the distress sprayer. And this is where the distress sprayer is much better than using just a water mister because it really kind of like spits the water out into little droplets. And you're not, if you um, half trigger the uh, trigger on the nozzle, if you do a full pump, you'll get a nice fine mist, like, you know, like most misters. But if you just toggle it, you're going to get little droplets. And that's what's really, really great about having that distress sprayer. Um, so Laura says, I joined late. Do you sell the acetate? So I have some supplies in my online shop, Laura, but I don't sell a lot of the supplies. You can use packaging material from your stamps, um, you know, a clear bag from, you know, a card kit. Um, but the acetate that I do sometimes use and like to use is Lawn Fawn has some acetate and it's actually heat resistant, which is really awesome because I'm actually making sure I'm putting my acetate off to the side here because this piece I know is not a Lawn Fawn piece and I don't want to melt it when I'm heating my surface. All the supplies are listed in the description of the YouTube video, and um, there's a link to my blog post on Facebook, so you guys can head on over there, and all the supplies are listed as well. Um, yes, ink smooshing. Hello, Sizzix in the house. We are going to be using lots of Sizzix dyes tonight. I can't wait. I love this little bear. Oh my gosh, he's adorable. You're welcome for the tips on the acetate substitutes. Sandra's asking, will there be information soon on my distress class? Yes, Sandra, very, very soon. I can't really give you an exact day, um, but very soon. It is going to be held the last weekend of April live, um, but details will be coming out soon. In, in full honesty, because, you know, I never hold back, um, I'm a little bit slower motion this week than I had anticipated after my event this past weekend. So I'm trying to get things, trying to get back up to full speed and get things accomplished. So each day gets better, right? So I'm going to do one more layer. So again, I just pressed my distress pad onto the acetate. I'm spritzing with the distress sprayer to get those droplets. You want you want like formed droplets, but you don't want it so wet that it's like moving all over the place. Okay. Laura says she's a little slow going this week too. I'm glad I'm not alone. And Josie said that as well. Oh my gosh, I checked on Josie. I was like, how are you feeling? I've been checking on the fun friends. I don't know. I think it was... Well, it's always a hard weekend on my body in general because I'm on my feet all weekend, you know, helping people. And, you know, it's very like go, go, go. But after two years of not leaving my house very much, sitting in this chair way too much, my body was like, what are you doing to me? Yes, everybody's exhausted this week. Sorry, friends. I appreciate you being there. <laughs> yeah, this acetate um, technique is so fun. I honestly could make these backgrounds all day, every day. And each layer that I'm doing, you could also switch the color if you wanted. But in this case, I just want salvage patina all throughout. Sherry says, I get to see you again this weekend with Crop and Create. I can hardly wait. I'm so excited for Crop and Create this weekend. So excited. I'm actually going to kind of run through my class one more time tomorrow to make sure I have all my ducks in a row. So we're just going to dry this background. And then I am going to set this aside. Um, 
And when I'm drying the backgrounds in between layers, I don't make sure that it's like crispy dry everywhere. I just make sure most of it is dry. Um, if you have a pool of ink that's just not drying, it's being super stubborn, I always have in my lap my flower sack cloth and I can blot up those droplets if I wanted to. But I know that I'm going to kind of dry this and set it aside. And if it needs to be blotted or dried anymore, when we get to assembling the card, we can do that later. All right. Let's just check in. I don't think I have missed any uh, questions. Totally an awesome technique, Laura, to play around with when you kind of don't have, if you're trying to get that creative mojo or your creative juices flowing again. It's also a great technique just to try different color combos. Um, and you can keep track of those color combos for even ink blending later or coloring. Um, so sometimes, you know, when you do wet techniques on your cardstock, you'll get a little warping. I'm not super worried about it, but I'm just kind of gently rolling my paper back um, to get it to lay nice and flat. Again, this is that Distress White Heavy Sock. It's a 130 pound cardstock, really, really nice and thick. But look at those awesome layers of ink, inky goodness. Oh my gosh. Again, I could literally do these all day. I concentrated my ink up towards the top because I know I'm going to be putting some hillsides down along the bottom. All right. Sue's working on her homework for Crop and Create. That's awesome. Thank you, Carol. She can't wait for the class this weekend. Thank you guys so much. Jen is asking if the kitties are with me. I've heard Jack walking through and kind of chirping down the hallway, but nobody, nobody's in here with me. They much rather be like conking out on the couch with Chris right now. But I can hear Jack's in the kitchen. I can hear his little chirp chatter that he does. And those are my kitties, Jack, Gus, and Mr. Harley. Hello, Lisa. Hello, Angela. Thanks for joining live. So I just wiped the acetate off with my flower sack cloth. And to the right of me, um, I have an Alex drawer unit from Ikea. In the bottom drawer, I have hanging file folders. And so I keep all my big scraps of colored cardstock right there. And then I also have a file folder with just some acetate pieces. So that's where I just stuck that. So it's easy to find next time. I love all the crop and create peeps who are in here uh, working on their homework. Hey, whatever motivates you, right? Whatever motivates you. All right. So on the card here, we've got two little kind of hillsides. Um, this back one, you don't see very much, but this one, I wanted it to kind of have some poofy snow at his feet. Um, so what I actually used is Lawn Fawn stitched hillsides and Lawn Fawn um, puffy cloud border, actually. So I took a piece, a four and a quarter piece of um, Distress White Heavy Sock, and I just put one die at the very top and one die at the very bottom. I'm going to now cut these in half. And we'll do a little bit of ink blending on them. And I say cut in half, but it does not need to um, be perfect. Um, I'm actually going to give a little bit more to the back layer than the front layer. So you can kind of see we've just got a little, a little snowy snow going on. Now, if I live on Cape Cod in Massachusetts, and if Mother Nature has any ideas about me doing a snowy card, thinking that, you know, she should be dropping any snow down. That that ain't happening. That should not should not be happening. All right. So now I'm going to ink blend the edges. And this time I'm going to use um, salvage patina still, but distress oxide because I want it to be a little bit of a softer dusting of color. I don't want it to be um, as vibrant. And when I use distress oxides, 
I use my um, ink blending tools and a domed foam. I don't use blending brushes um, with Distress Oxides because Distress Oxides have a pigment property to them. And I feel like it just kind of gunks up my blender brushes. So it's a personal choice, um, but I, I just still use the um, ink blending tools and the blending foam. All right. Janice is visiting and she or popped in and she's working on an under the sea wedding card. Ooh, that sounds really, really cool. And yes, the bear is a Mr. Mr. Holtz, a Tim Holtz die. It's called Cozy Winter from Sizzix. Um, <clears throat> and I have all the supplies. Um, Sherry, I think it was Sherry. Yep, Sherry, I see you're watching on YouTube. I have all the supplies listed below in the description of the video. So you'll find those down there. So I'm just touching the tops of the, um, Could you try again? oops, I'm just top touching the tops of the um, snow with some salvage patina. Laura says no more snow. Sorry about that, you guys. I guess my watch decided, you know, I was talking to it, even though all my devices are in do not disturb mode. I don't know what. I don't know. My Apple Watch is getting a bit up there in years. It's um, over four years old now. So I think it's starting to starting to lose its steam. All right. So now we've got our cute little hillsides. We've got our cute little background. Look how this is all coming together. And now we're going to start to put together our, um, actually, before we do our bear, we will work on the sentiment. So let it snow right here, okay? But only let it snow in December or January and only once a year. Those are my rules. Um, for those of you guys that don't know, I am not a big fan of winter at all. So, all right. No worries if you're popping in late. So this is um, Festive Words, and it comes with Let It Snow, Hello Winter, and Joy. And what's really cool is um, the letters all cut out together, so you don't have like a million pieces, which I love. And then also it has like a back layer um, as like a backdrop. You'll kind of see. So we're going to do the Let It Snow part first. And the way I added color to that is I'm just going to ink blend this whole piece of Distress White Heavy Stock, and then we're just going to die cut it. So it's just a nice, smooth, salvage patina color. Um, I get my flower sack cloths from Amazon, and I have those listed um, if they're not in the links on YouTube, um, if you go over to my blog post, I have them linked there. I will tell you, I've gotten some flower sack cloths before that don't absorb really well. So um, just be careful if you're kind of blindly picking your own. And always when you get them, do a wash. So that will help them become more absor absorbent. Ab absorbent absorbent. Sorry. A again, my brain is still a little tired, you guys. A little tired. Josie says, the pugs, buddy, and I feel wicked crafty with you, but have to say good night. No worries, Jos. Have a good night. Thanks for popping in. Awesome. So again, I just ink blended this, and now we are going to die cut it. So I'm just going to put it in place here. My trusty little mini die cut machine. You guys know I use this so much for most of my die cutting. And so you can see it cuts out all one piece except for the little tittle. So I'm actually going to punch that out first and put it in a little bowl here so I don't lose it. 
Um, you guys can help me remember that it's there when I'm looking for it later, okay? Sherry says she's looking for a little die cut machine, but she doesn't know what one to get. So I'm using the Alta New Blossom machine, and I have been for a number of years now, and I'm very happy with it. Um, I'm excited, though, to try Hero Arts has a new machine, um, and the plates are a bit longer. I don't know if the mouth of it is wider than the Alta New Blossom machine because the Alta New one has a pretty wide um, width. But having longer plates is kind of cool because, you know, you'll be able to fit a lot more pieces on there and die cut more at once. Um, but I'm very happy with my Alta New Blossom machine. If I do switch to the Hero Arts one, it's more just because I just want to try something new, right? All right, so like I said, this die layers onto a background. And so I'm going to cut the background out of some Lawn Fawn Pixie Dust um, Sparkle cardstock. And see the fun little sparkle. This is about all the glitter is sparkle cardstock is what we're using tonight, you guys. I'm wearing my new Glitter All of the Things shirt but I'm not going to even be using Prisma Glitter tonight. Isn't that weird for those of you guys that are with me all the time? Yay, I'm so happy that you're looking forward to the part two for distress class. Jess, thank you. Wendy says she feels like most of the time she spends time looking for stuff. Oh, I hear you there, Wendy. I hear you there. All right. So I'm just going to put these dies away. But again, this is the festive words, really fun, funky um, font, but really quick and easy to use, which I love. Actually, let's go ahead and glue this together now. And then I won't lose my tittle. I know Brienne says, no glitter, no Copics, very little stamping. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, you guys. I don't know. Who knows what I was thinking when I designed this? All right. So I'm just adding a little bit of Lawn Fawn glue tube to the backs of this letters. My Lawn Fawn glue tube is revolting because I haven't used it in a few days and it's kind of oozing out. So it was a little bit more generous than I, than I would have wanted. Whenever you're trying to line a die up like this, really just let the paper fall in place because paper has a memory and it knows what shape it's supposed to be in for the most part. Um, but don't fight it. Just kind of let it fall into place and It'll all work out. Because this is on sparkle cardstock, I'm just going to press it for a minute um, so that it will really, um, so that it will really hold down. I'm laughing because Jen just said that her and Lindsay are both shaking their heads over there. I would think Lindsay is proud of me because I'm not using glitter. All right, we're going to add the little tittle to the eye so that I don't lose it. And look how cute this is, right? We're going to add a little snowflake to the center of the O in a little while too. But I'm going to set that aside. Now we can start to work on this adorable bear. So like I mentioned, this is from Cozy Winter. And of course, he can be a brown bear. But for some reason, when I saw him, I just immediately thought, oh my gosh, I want to make him a polar bear. I love polar bears. I think they're so cool. And um, I follow a few accounts on Instagram that are up in, you know, Canada, you know, doing polar bear expeditions where you can kind of obviously see them from a very far distance. And I just, I just love them. But anyways, all right. So I know sometimes people get a little nervous on Tim's colorized dyes because they end up being a trillion pieces. 
And I feel ya because I have put together a few of his colorized ones that are a trillion pieces. Um, but this one is not. I assure you, it is not a trillion pieces. Um, so you get this die right here, which is the main body of the bear. Um, it has his arms. It has the coffee mug, um, his eyes, stuff like that we'll talk about. There's a scarf. Okay, so there's the scarf die. And then there's his belly. Besides that, there are a few snowflakes, which we're going to use in a minute, a woodpecker and a branch. But as far as the bear goes, it is not a ton of pieces, which I love. I love, love, love. Because sometimes you just don't have the patience for that, right? So I've already die cut the bear out of Lawn Fawn Vanilla Cardstock. All right, that's going to be my polar bear. And what I'm going to do is I inked a little bit of edges with a little bit of um, spun sugar distress oxide. I wanted to just kind of pink up the bellies, pink up the um, snout and the ears a little bit. So we're going to do that next. Thank you, Sizzix. I liked the polar bear idea too. So again, because I'm using um, Distress Oxides, I'm just using my ink blending tool. And I really just want a little dusting, kind of like how we would shadow it if we were Copic coloring. Those of you that take the online classes with me, you know, we, we shadowed the bellies of mice and skunks and all the little critters. So we're just dusting it with a little pink. So cute. Right. Yeah, the woodpecker is adorable. I haven't used him yet, but he is super, super cute. All right. Then I'm just looking. I don't want to color his arms, so I'm going to punch those out. Um, This piece here is his little like snout. So I do want to add a little color to that. So it's going to be easier if I kind of just do it while it's in this backer still. And again, I'm just kind of dusting, you know, three quarters of the edges, not all of it. So that's his little snout. And then I want to color these two pieces right here are the inner part of his ears. So while it, again, is in here, I just want to make sure I'm picking the right ones. I'm looking at my sample. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's his nose. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of pounce that Distress Oxide right on those little pieces. So those are the inner part of his ears. And then these two pieces are his eyes. We're going to cut those again out of white. And then these are actually going to be black for his nose and his mouth and his eyeballs. So I'm going to actually leave that alone and we'll clean up my mess from spun sugar. Remember, if you guys can't stay with me while I make this whole card, the replay will still be available on, um, on YouTube and Facebook. And if you're looking for more um, holiday card inspiration, you guys can um, see the previous Get Kraken on Christmas videos as well. All right. So I cut his scarf out of Lawn Fawn Mermaid cardstock. But I want to dust it with a little bit of peacock feathers. And I'm using regular distress this time because I want it to be bright and vivid. Um, and so now I'm using my blender brush. And I'm just trying to get a little dusting of ink on the edges of the scarf. I don't want to cover it completely. I want to keep some of that mermaid um, cardstock to show. But what this is going to do is really kind of make the scarf seem like it's dimensional, like it has some depth to it. Okay. Okay. 
wipe off my table again with a little water. Make sure I don't leave any ink behind, especially since we're working with a polar bear. Awesome. I'm happy you were able to find the supply list. Miss Huffy says she's going to practice her smooshing this weekend. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. So now we can start to put a little bit of our bear together. I'm going to start by adding his belly. I love how this die has um, the little indentation details. So it looks like fur. You can kind of see the embossed or debossed lines. So we'll get his belly on. And then we can go ahead and add his scarf. I'm only going to add adhesive on the part that goes around his neck because the other part's going to hang off. So we'll add that in place. So cute. And then we'll go ahead and add his little snout. I'm kind of getting all these pieces down. We still have some pieces we need to cut. But I figured this way, there's less chance of me losing pieces. I'm going to wait to do his hands. We'll talk about what he's going to hold in a minute. I'm going to do a teeny dot of glue tube on both of his ears. And we'll get these little pink pieces placed in there. Luckily... Um, my nails have grown back a little bit. I cut them very short a couple weeks ago and it was so hard for me to do anything. I know a lot of you like to use tweezers, but I don't work well with tweezers. So hello, Annalisa. Thanks for popping on. All right. I'm going to get my, I said I don't like to work with tweezers, but I'm going to get my tweezers just to nudge this. But I don't actively use tweezers like some people do. I just have a really hard time not using my hands. Oh my gosh, he already looks so, so cute. All right, I'm going to die cut his eyeballs and his nose and stuff. And so for that, I'm going over again my drawer that I have next to me with file folders. You guys can kind of see I keep bigger scraps. Um, and that's what I use the most for my colored cardstock. Um, every once in a while, I'll get a new sheet of cardstock and cut it into quarters and put it in the um, file folder. So I have more of that color, but a lot of the times I don't need to do that. All right. So I need all these little pieces, these three little pieces right here. And then the one right above his ears for his nose. So what I'm going to do is just cut a couple small pieces of black cardstock and I'm going to lay them over just like that and put it through the die cut machine. Yeah, it's so cool the dimension that the bear has just from the little details on him. Um, you know, just by die cutting a couple pieces of cardstock. It's I think it's really cool too. All right, we're gonna crank this through. Hello, Danielle. So remember, every month I do Get Cracking on Christmas, the blog post comes out on the third. Oh, and then the die moves on you. Um, the third Thursday of the month. And I always share links to some of my crafty friends who are also posting so you can see their inspiration. Especially on Instagram, you can search the Get Cracking on Christmas hashtag. 
and people are actively using that. All right, I just got to put this through again for his little eyeballs. My um, my dye moved on me. It happens. I could tape it down, but I don't know. Maybe I will this time, so it won't happen again. And you guys don't need to wait for me to get my act together. So Annalisa says, I keep seeing these little die cut machines. I want one. I don't need one, but I want one. Now I'll tell you, Annalisa, I am a enabler, obviously, and there's many things that I'll tell you that you'll want, but I would beg to differ. I think having a mini die cut machine, especially knowing um, the stamp companies that you like to use, like Lawn Fawn, um, having a mini die cut machine actually makes die cutting so much faster and easier. So I would beg to differ on your, I don't need one. I would say you do need one. Okay, so now I am going to put these little spots down. So this is probably the most tedious part of putting the bear together. Um, but it's not too bad. I put a little dot of glue tube and I'm using my gel picker upper and I'm placing the cardstock down into it. You honestly could also just draw, um, draw the pieces in. You don't have to, you know, use the cardstock pieces. You could just draw it in with a black pen or you could use a black glaze pen. Um, okay. And we're going to put his little mouth, which I think is the cutest that it's like open. Just going to get it out of here. And I just remembered I have to cut his eyeballs because I want them to be white and not, um, not the vanilla color. So let me, um, I have a piece of white cardstock here. I always have pieces of stuff everywhere. Okay. I can't lose that little dot right there because that's one of them. Oh, but it's on the die cut machine. Oh boy. Let me get it off and then hopefully not lose it. I'll put it right there. All right. So now his eyes are these two pieces right here. So I'm just going to put some white cardstock over those. I will tape it down so that we don't lose it. Um, so it doesn't move like it did before. Yeah, it's just so convenient to have a small die cut machine because it's right here and ready to go. And I like that it doesn't take up a lot of real estate on your desk because if you're anything like me, often your desk is um, cluttered. Barb says, reason enough for me. I love it. Yep, the the Sizzix Sidekick is another good one. Yeah, this um, yellow tape is the best ever craft tape by Spellbinders. This has been my favorite uh, low tack tape that I've been using ever since Thermoweb changed their formula of their purple tape. Thank you, Brianne. I had missed that question. Danielle says, when Jen says you need it, you need it. <laughs> there are times that I will enable you guys for fun things that might be might be fun to get. But there's some things that, yes, I, I do truly believe you need. I was talking with somebody at Crop on the Cape this weekend. She is a new um, paper crafter. And she's like, do I need the Misty? And I'm like, yes. Yes, you do. She showed me a knockoff that was very inexpensive on, um, on Amazon. I honestly had never even seen this specific one. And I was like, don't even, don't mess around with 
a cheaper knockoff because you're going to wish that you had the good one from the get-go. Spend the money now and it'll last you forever. So I no noticed I put his snout um, too high. So even though it ripped the cardstock a little bit, I'm going to try to lower it a little bit. So there's room for his eyes. That's the surgery that I'm doing right now. I'm just making a hot mess, hot mess express, which is what I had a feeling might happen tonight. All right, let's get his other white part in. It's actually cute tucked behind his snout. So I'm actually okay with, with how this is going. Remember you guys, if things don't go the way you want them to, it's just paper and there's always a fix or a change or something that you can do differently. The only reason why I'm not squashing it and die cutting it again is because I'm live and I don't want to take up more of your guys' time. Oh, this is really cute. See how I tucked him behind his snout this time? This time I didn't. So I just love how you can get a totally different look. All right, so now we're going to put his little pupils in. Let's see. Oh, Miss Huppy hasn't jumped into die cutting yet. Not yet. Um, so this tool is the Crystal Katana. There's a lot of, um, and I'm probably not pronouncing it correctly. There's a lot of different brands out there. Um, I did just get this one from Trinity Stamps. It has the same thing and it has a really nice, um, paper piercer on the other end. So there's a lot of different ones out there. Okay, let's try to get these pupils in place. Um, I have to concentrate <laughs> because they're so small. So bear with me if I miss your question. I'm going to bring this one in first. And again, you could use a, um, a black gel pen or a fine point pen if you didn't want to place the cardstock. This is probably the only, the most tedious part of it is these little pieces, but there's not many of them. So, and he ends up being so cute after it's totally worth it. Okay. I just want to get my yellow tape off the back. You also could um, put some sticky paper on the back and do it that way. And I have done that in the past. But sometimes when I'm doing just a few small pieces, like on this guy, it's just faster for me to, um, to just place them with a little glue tube. All right. I got a little glue tube on the front, but I'm not worried about it because I know that it dries clear. And matte, look how cute, right? Oh my gosh, that's funny. I didn't even notice I said that, Tracy. Bear with me while I deal with this bear. All right, so then we have his arms. And let me show you guys the die again. The die does come with a really cute mug with a little heart. But in true Genabler fashion, when I designed my card, I wanted to kind of show other things that he could hold. So I'm actually using these, um, I think this is called holiday minis, maybe Christmas minis. It's linked below. But, um, but I use the gingerbread man. And tonight I thought we would actually use the candy cane. And I'm actually going to make the candy cane um, pink because, you know, me and non-traditional colors, right? So let's see here. Let me find, find the candy cane pieces. I'm thinking, looking at it, it was, it was going to be simple. It's just going to be two pieces. Oh, yeah, it is. Awesome. 
All right, so I'm going to die cut it once in white and once in pink. So I'm going to get a piece of pink out again out of my file folder system over here. This is a true time saver as well, you guys, having having that cardstock right there. So should I do this pink, which is um, gua it's a guava from Lawn Fawn? Or should I do a soft pink like ballet slippers? So let me know. Dark pink or light pink? Let me know in the comments for the candy cane. Dark pink or light pink? I'm going to die cut it first out of white so I have the background. Danielle says, my glue tube starts running like crazy when I have it upside down leaning against something. That's why I didn't get the holder. What's the trick? Yours is not running. Oh my God, you guys are split like 50-50. Some more people, please chime in. Hello, Dottie. So Danielle, mine did run a little bit, okay? Because like I said, it was kind of having a freak out moment, but then it calms down. And to me, having it ready to go in the glue tube holder is worth losing a little bit of, um, a little bit of, glue. All right. Now dark is winning. Guava, guava it is. All right. Let me cut the white one first. At first you guys were literally almost 50, 50. That was going to be funny. Ooh, Shelly says one dark, one pink. Skip the white. Ooh, we're getting fancy now. Well, let me try it. We'll see. That's a good idea. It actually might look nice against the polar bear, right? You guys are so smart. Can you hang out with me every day in my studio when I'm trying to uh, <laughs> come up with ideas? Dottie says she loves her glue tube holder. Yes, I do too. And again, sometimes it'll ooze out, but it's worth it the little bit of glue you lose just for the ease of having it ready to go. Yeah, I know this one. I only die cut into this one. Do you guys think I could treat myself to a new plate? What do you think? Oh, so bad. Who else does that? Who keeps on to their plates? I finally just got rid of um, my Spellbinders plate for my bigger machine and treated myself to a new one. Who else does that? Leaves their plates like this. Like, really, Jen? So I'm using the Lawn Fawn glue tube. I use that a lot. And then I also use um, Distress Collage Medium a lot. Those are my two kind of go-to wet glues. Nicole says she keeps her die cut plates until they break. I mean, it's still working. And with this smaller machine, it's not leaving marks on the paper. So uh, getting my money's worth, that's for sure. I've had these plates for probably five years. Danielle says, that makes sense. I don't mind losing a little either if it stops at some time. I really like that having the idea of having it in the holder. Yeah, I've never had um, a Lawn Fawn glue tube just continuously flow out, Danielle. Um, and it doesn't flow out every time. It's just sometimes it's like in a mood. All right. So I'm not even going to do the white. I'm going to listen to Shelly. We're just going to go right for it and do the two pinks. I think that was a great idea. And I think it'll stand out on the polar bear really, really cutely. So I'm going to just dab a little bit of Lawn Fawn glue tube on the stripes of the candy cane. Again, this is from that Christmas mini set. And I love, I mean it's only these two pieces. So it's not super complicated to put these candy canes together. And the gingerbread wasn't hard either. I just thought since I'm making a second card, I might as well switch it up a little bit.
Heidi just said, oh, please, you saw my cuddle bug plates. I did. I did. Yeah, I, I don't know why we, why, like, why do we hold on to silly things like that? All right, maybe by next Get Kraken, next month, you guys, maybe I will have new plates for my small machine. Maybe. All right, so back to our little polar bear. We've got, we've got his one little arm that's going to go like this. And then we've got his one little arm that's going to go like this. So I just need to figure out how I'm going to place the candy cane in it. Um, my original card had the cute little gingerbread man, which was adorable. But I just thought I would switch it up. Sorry, I have something in my eye. And it's not glitter because we're not using glitter tonight. I agree, Shelly. I think this candy cane is going to pop. I'm just trying to figure out how to put it in his arm. I guess maybe it's not going to go into both arms. Cute. So cute. All right. So I'm going to put glue on the candy cane. And then I'm going to put glue behind this little arm. Because we kind of have to do this at the same time. I'm going to put his arm down, and this is the beauty of using that wet glue. Put his arm down, but even though it's down, it's wet glue, so I can squeeze this little candy cane under it. Oh my gosh, so cute. Thank you, Shelly, for the idea of the two pinks. Kat says she uses the old plates of the Japanese hole punch. I don't, what are, why are you punching holes in it, Kat? I don't know what that means. Oh my gosh, you guys, look how cute he is. Right? So cute. All right, so let's go back to our card. Remember, remember we did all this already. Um, so what I did is I used the new tall pines from Tim and Sizzix and I cut it out of noble fur, which is a really great green from Lawn Fawn. And so we just need to start to figure out our placement I think this was about the time when I was like, oh, I need to do a bigger card because all the things that I want on it are not going to fit. All right. So I think just like last time, I'm going to attach this back layer flat. Thank you, guys. Will it work with your design to put them on an action wobbler? Oh, Brian, now you're getting wild and crazy. It actually might work, but I don't know where I put my action wobblers after we used them. Was that just last month that we used the action wobblers? We're getting all crazy with our action wobblers now. The it might work, but it might not, Brianne, because of my layers of snow. But you most certainly could make it work. For sure, for sure. All right. So now we're going to add our tall pines. So I, when I add you know, glue to something like this. I don't worry about it being everywhere. I just get it to the most of the parts, if that makes sense. You don't need it everywhere. It's going to lay down. And there's a lot of other stuff that's going to be going over these guys. Okay. And I want them up pretty high, but I want to make sure they fit on the card front. 
I love these tall pines. I think they're so pretty. And I like that, you know, I have a lot of teal going on on this card, but I love the little bit of green. I think it just adds, breaks it up a little bit. The actual wobbler was last month. Thank you. I couldn't remember if it was last month or the month before. All right. And so then we're going to put this front layer of snow on with some foam squares. I'm going to concentrate them towards the bottom, though, so that I will be able to tuck the bear into the snow. We do still have to quickly white emboss a sentiment. And cut some snowflakes. So, but we're almost, we're getting there, you guys. Yeah, the tall pines are really nice. The detail in them are just so beautiful. All right. Oh my gosh, it's coming together. So I ended up, I put, you know, we're going to have let it snow, but I wanted a little small sentiment too. And the perfect set to do that with is the Tim Holtz um, Tiny Text. And this one is the um, Christmas one. I use this set a lot. So instead of doing, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. I'm going to choose another sentiment. Um, how about walking in a winter wonderland? So I'm going to pull that one out. And we're going to do just a little bit of white embossing. Hi, chunky glitter. Hi, Prisma glitter. I always keep, I have a bucket of Prisma chunky clear embossing and white embossing in front of me at almost all times. Unless I'm getting into a real, real cleaning mode. I think for this, we'll use the Misty just to make it easier. So I just cut a strip of white, um, distressed white heavy stock. And I'm going to put it here in the Misty. We're going to going to kind of move the sentiment out because I can always trim paper off from the left or right side. Because I am embossing, I'm going to use the cottontail powder tool and dust my cardstock so that I won't have any um, static electricity. And I am carrying these on my shop now because I love them so much. It's a clay-based powder, so there's no scent, and it just works so much better. And whenever I'm white embossing, I use a white pigment ink. I don't use my Versamark. So I'm using the Lawn Fawn Yeti pigment ink pad. And we're going to go ahead and ink up our sentiment. We're going to end up inking this, you guys, with some salvage patina ink. So um, it's going to do a resist. You'll see what I mean. Stick with me. All right. So we've got that stamped. Go ahead and get the embossing powder on it. And I'm just looking. It went a little crooked on the sentiment, but I'm not gonna, I think it's gonna look, I think it's gonna look cute. So I'm working, I'm gonna work with it. And so now I'm gonna use my embossing gun, unlike before I was using my Ranger heat tool.
I'm embossing it. Well, I let it heat up for a minute before I brought it to the paper. And I'm embossing it from behind. I know you guys aren't going to be able to see it change because it's on white cardstock. But we're going to do an ink blend over it to have a resist. And hopefully you guys will kind of see what I mean. Annalisa says, um, I have never had any success with white pigment inks, especially with text. So I don't, I don't think I would necessarily have stamped that. Um, well, we can try it. I don't think I would stamp it on cardstock without embossing it in white, Annalisa, but it is a really good ink um, to do the white embossing with. And why did I heat it from behind? I find that it helps so that the powder doesn't blow away. Um, even though we have the pigment ink that's holding the powder, it's just, you know, one way of not having so much powder blow away. And actually, here is Yeti, Annalisa. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to hit my camera. Um, Yeti stamped with that tiny text, and it stamped really nicely. Can you see that? Really beautifully. So, um, and then the other white that I used to use was the Hero Arts one. So Hero Arts and La the Lawn Fawn ones. I personally have never owned the Simon Says Stamp one, so I can't say yay or nay to that one. All right, so let's get some ink on here and we're gonna ink blend it with the uh, salvage patina to stress oxide. I also, um, I haven't stamped with a clear stamp in a while with the white ink, um, Annalisa, and that was with a red rubber stamp and they are crisper. So, you know, our clear stamps are really great nowadays and you can get a really, really nice impression from them, but nothing is as crisp as red rubber. So that's something else to consider too. See how cute? Walking in a winter wonderland. Okay, but I don't want to be walking in one. So hopefully I'm not waking up the uh, winter gods here. All right, I'm going to just clean this ink off my table. For those of you guys that don't know, my table surface is a glass table surface. So that's why I'm doing all my inking directly on it. Um, all right. So now back to, oh, let's um, die cut our snowflakes real quick. And then we'll be kind of just finishing up our assembly. So the Cozy Winter Die Set, like I mentioned, it comes with um, a woodpecker, a branch, and some snowflakes. And even the woodpecker that's adorable isn't too, too many pieces. but it comes with these three cute snowflakes. So we're going to die cut a few of these. They're kind of like funky shaped snowflakes. I'm going to put my cover onto my white embossing powder so we don't have a mess accidentally happen. And I'm going to die cut these out of some more of the pixie dust Sparkle cardstock. Yeah, it came out really crisp. I'll have to try it with some clear sentiments too, but I bet it will come out nice. And you have to have um, a really gentle touch too, I find. You know, don't push too, too hard on your misty or your acrylic block, whatever you're stamping with. All right, I'm gonna die cut these a couple times. We have a few 
snowflakes to work with. I know one of the snowflakes is going to go into the center of the O in the sentiment. And then I have this crazy thing where I always have to do, you know, odd numbers of things. So we can't have six. Yes, we are glittering all of the things just with cardstock tonight. I can't believe no one noticed my shirt yet, but I know um, I'm teeny tiny, but let me show you guys really quick. So at Crop on the Cape this weekend, I had lots of fun gear for sale. This is a long sleeve shirt. It says glitter all of the things. And I will be launching these on my website in early April. So stay tuned for that. And this long sleeve is so soft and so cozy. Um, the white embossing powder that I used is the Brutus Monroe Alabaster White, which is my favorite. And that's what I link to in my blog posts. All hail the glitter. I love it, Jess. I love it. I love it. All right, I'm going to just die cut one more round um, and then I'll figure out the odd number. Well, this will make it nine, so this will be odd, but you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Let's see if I can fit them on here. I'm using every little speck of this glitter cardstock. Um, for Crop and Create, the event that is this weekend, throughout the week, all the teachers have been doing these really fun meet and greets. And the owner of the stamp market, I'm totally blanking on her name now. I think is it Amy? But she was talking about Sparkle Cardstock and how she uses every little speck of it. Because it's not the cheapest cardstock and you might as well get your money's worth. Yay, Danielle. Yeah, I can't wait to launch them on my site. I had done a pre-order for Crop on the Cape for these shirts. And a lot of you guys were like, can I order one now? And I'm like, no, you can't. Because it was too much to keep all the different orders, keep track of them. So those of you that were patiently waiting, I appreciate it. It is Amy. That's what I thought. Thank you, Beth. Yeah, she. I've been watching all the meet and greets, learning about the fellow teachers, <clears throat> which has been really fun. Um, and yeah, she's like, I use every speck. And I'm like, I was like literally sitting in my room like, yep, me too, me too. All right, I'm going to put these snowflakes back so I don't lose them. You can see my trend for tonight. All right, so now we've got all these snowflakes. We've got our sentiment. Um, here's my big sentiment. We're going to start. I liked just putting a little snowflake in the center of the O. I just thought it looked so cute. Um, so we're going to start by doing that. Amy Yingland, that sounds right, Jen. Thank you. So embarrassing that I wasn't sure what her first name was. I apologize. But I thought, I thought it was Amy. I love their, their stamps. They're so fun. It's like a really fun graphic feel. So it's right up my like graphic designer love, like of typography and everything. All right. So we know that Let It Snow is going to go over here. And we know our little polar bear, I kind of put one, one foot in, one foot out. Okay, so he's going to go here. And so now I'm just going to sprinkle some of these snowflakes around the top. No rhyme or reason, just get them out there. No 
worries. No worries, Sherry. That's the great thing about this event is if you didn't catch something, you can always watch the replay. And that's the great thing about all of these online things that have really picked up speed since the pandemic is, you know, my monthly lives like this, you can always catch them on replay. My online classes, you can always catch them on replay. It's, it's pretty cool. It's really so many resources out there now. Um, you know, at your disposal whenever you have time, because we all lead different lives with different schedules. So I think it's pretty cool. Hello, Joy. Thanks for popping in to get cracking on Christmas. Let's see, how many snowflakes did I do? One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, we're going to do one more. We're going to go for seven. That's going to be the magic number on this card. All right, so I'm going to figure this out. Just kind of looking at my original card this one I'm going to cut my own pennant which we've done often in my classes just switching up all kinds of things on this card tonight why not right <laughs> Brianne says she finally took everything out of the box tonight for the Crop and Create event. So many fun goodies. I didn't get to see the unboxing live because Crop on the Cape had just started Thursday night. So there was no way I was going to be watching, watching my computer. We were, we were registering all the 200 people. Um, but it was so fun to watch the live, the replay after so many fun, fun goodies. So I'm just figuring out where a foam square is needed. Some of this is sitting on the snow, so I don't need necessarily foam squares everywhere. Hello, Melanie. <laughs> um, the card size is five and a half by five and a half. If that was a question I missed. So you can see how I put the foam squares towards the top and then whatever is going to touch down onto the puffy snow, I'm going to add some Lawn Fawn glue to, to adhere it. So now it'll be kind of like all one nice, nice level, but still have dimension. Oh my gosh. I still, I love this card so much. I'm trying to think when I made the original one. Sometime last fall, I think, is when these projects were due for Tim to be able to share on his live. All right. And we're going to do the same thing with this little foot because that's going to be hanging out on the front and we're going to tuck it, tuck them in. Oh my gosh. So cute. You guys, again, Shelly, if you're still here, I love the pink on pink, um, candy cane. And that is it. We have our let it snow, let it snow, let it snow card. We did not use any ultra fine glitter this time, but we've got lots of sparkle cardstock. We've got our little walking in the winter wonderland. And just so you guys know, I did cut a card base for my original one. Those of you know, you know, I'm really bad about card bases. But when I send my cards in for Tim, I have to put them on card bases. So this one got a card base, so it is doable. Um, and I'll do the same thing for this one, you know another day because you guys all know I'm really bad about that but how cute right so
so fun. And with this Christmas minis um, die set, he could be holding a lot of different things. The present, the stocking, the wreath, the little tree, the snowman. And of course, we can make him a brown bear. He doesn't always need to be a polar bear either. Um, but I love it. I love it so, so much. Any last questions that I might have missed? Awesome, you guys. Well, thank you so much for joining me this Thursday night. Again, Get Cracking on Christmas is always the third Thursday of the month. I did post this card on my site last Thursday, um, but I always announce when my live will be on that blog post. Um, so hopefully you guys will be able to join me each month. It is uh, Get Cracking on Christmas. This is a great way for us to get our holiday cards done early so we're not stressed later. And that way we get to really play and have fun and do different techniques. The bear is Cozy Christmas and it's a Sizzix Tim Holtz die. And I have, if you're on YouTube, I have all of the supplies linked in the description of this video. If you're on Facebook, in the caption of this video, I have a link to my blog post where all of the supplies are listed there. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you joining me tonight and I will see you guys all soon. Bye guys.